This next tale is by Dee Calhoun. You know Dee from the story The Room in episode 13, as well as the story Crucified in the episode titled I'm Not Dead. This week, Dee has for us fame. He hated living in the mid-1990s. He hated that his beloved 1980s were gone. He hated what music had become. 1980s heavy metal had been so much fun. Anthems of parties and good times and living free. Sex, drugs, indulgence that was bigger than life. Grunge had killed it. Teased hair and spandex had been replaced by flannel and worn out jeans. Loud, promiscuous women had been replaced by introverted girls. Songs about drinking and fucking were gone, replaced by mumbled songs about how shitty life was. He didn't need songs like that. He was already living it. He hated living with his mother, existing in her damn basement, hearing her scream at him endlessly, telling him that no one gave a shit about him, that his father had been worthless, and he was worthless, yelling at him to grow up and get a real job and move out. He had a job, but to her it wasn't good enough. It's no wonder that his dad had hauled ass years ago. Nagging old bitch. One day, she would go too far. He would listen to his music and wished he could play like that. He wished, but he wasn't instrumentally inclined. He tried to sing, but he could not carry a tune. He would have loved to be in a band, but no such luck. He wanted so badly to be known and liked. He wanted so much to be a part of music in some way. He decided that he could do that by writing about music. Not this depressing, murky grunge shit, though. He would write about the glory days of the decade before. He decided to publish a newsletter that talked about those bands in that era. It made him happy to remember those days that seemed so long ago. Maybe he could get some of the younger crowd to appreciate what he had loved. He typed his newsletter up in Word, one page, front and back. He had copies made at Kinko's. Then he launched a very clever idea. He frequented a local independent record store. The owners were friendly, knew him and his mother and where they lived. The store distributed a local music newspaper which focused on local and regional music. He had checked the paper out and, in truth, didn't care for the content. It praised this awful modern music and praised the local bands that played it. The paper was popular, though, and free. It always disappeared quickly from the rack in the store. He would use this paper to distribute his newsletter. Each month, he would print his newsletter, run, and head to the record store. He would put a copy into each copy of the music newspaper, he included his AOL email address so that readers could correspond with him. He thought of the interaction, the attention. He thought of the fame. It did not go well. For the first couple of months, things were quiet. Emails would trickle in here and there. One asked, are you a real person? Some said that his idea of distribution was pretty crafty. 
Now and then he'd get an instant message on AOL. Mainly curious questions, but questions nonetheless. Questions meant that there was interest. Interest meant that he was becoming known. In spite of his mother's constant complaining, he was happy. He thrived on putting his newsletter together. He couldn't wait for emails to come in. He couldn't wait for the instant messages to come in. Until those things began to make fun of him and his efforts. The people who didn't like his music began sounding off. They liked this new shit. They ridiculed him. They told him to get a life. One email simply said, Metal's dead. Shave your head. More than one asked him if he lived with his mommy. If he lived with his mommy. His mommy. Mommy. She was the nasally, never-ending voice. She who was getting more and more exasperating each day. If only she would shut the fuck up. He became combative in his newsletter. He began writing pieces about how today's music was garbage. He would write rumors about local bands. Rumors that he had created. These bands were terrible, he thought. They needed to be exposed. Readers responded with anger, insults, and more mockery. Emails called him names. Instant messages said that his musical tastes were utter shit. These things upset him greatly. He brooded and became even more irritated. He wanted to be known, but not this way. His mother hounded him ceaselessly. She constantly compared him to his father. His anger boiled month after month. One day, he came home to over 300 messages in his inbox. At one time, this would have thrilled him. It would have meant fame. Now it just filled him with dread. They were all from the same sender. He had been spammed. All of the emails carried the same message. No one gives a fuck about you or what you write. Over and over and over again. While he was reading, the voice bellowed down the stairs. Get the fuck off that email, the voice howled. His help was needed in the upstairs hallway. Get off your ass. No one cares about the shit you're doing. He was then struck with crystal clarity. He helped his mother in the upstairs hallway. She never stopped running her mouth. She told him that no one cared about his waste of time music rag. He was never going to know any sort of fame. He remained silent. He was through with this whole goddamn mess. He was going to end this whole goddamn mess. He had snapped. He prepped the next edition of his newsletter. It didn't take long. The content was the same on both sides. You bastards will give a fuck. My mother will give a fuck. Blood is on your hands. Fuck you. The next week, the next edition of the music paper was released. That afternoon, he stuffed the paper with his newsletter. There were looks and some giggles from people as he did so. 
His clothes were dirty and his hair greasy. He heard someone say loser as he exited. He walked around for the rest of the afternoon, waiting for darkness. He headed home. He brooded. He wept. He let the anger boil and fester. He thought of the telltale heart. His eye would torture me no more. That voice would torture him no more. Nothing would. His mother was sitting on the front porch. She wasn't alone. Who was with her? He approached and a voice shouted his name. The voice also told him to freeze. The police were here. Someone had given a fuck about what he had written. Too quickly, though. He still had to finish. He ran at his mother. He was hit on both sides and dragged to the ground. He screamed that he had to finish. Had to finish. His mother wept as he was taken away. The next day, his face appeared in dozens of regional newspapers. He was talked about on the local news. He was talked about amongst local music fans and musicians. He awaited his fate, not even realizing that his mother had been wrong. People certainly were giving a fuck about what he planned to do. And fame was finally his.